This episode of the Creep Street Podcast is brought to you by Martini Coffee Roasters. You know, people always look at me weird when I say I start off every morning with a big old martini. But then I set them straight and I tell them I'm talking about Martini Coffee Roasters Coffee. A delicious coffee made by the Martini family. They roast their coffee using a traditional method of sight and sound to roast those little babies to perfection. And they also sell green coffee beans for those home roasters out there. And right now, fans of the Creep Street podcast can get 20% off their entire order by using the code CREEPSTREET at martinicoffee.com. Once again, for 20% off your order, use the code CREEPSTREET at martinicoffee.com. Martini Coffee Roasters, the perfect coffee to keep you creeps caffeinated. You've taken a wrong turn. Down Creep Street. Citizens of the Milky Way, my name is Dylan Hackworth. I'm Maureen Bogey. And you have arrived at long dear last at the Creep Street Podcast. Welcome to Creep Street's fourth annual Halloween season. Wow. And we are so happy to be here. We are so happy to be here. Thank you all for being here. I mean, it's finally here. Yes. We've been waiting for it all year long. It has finally approached. The air is crisp. Oh. The leaves are falling. Ooh. The pumpkins are around. (laughs) And ghosts? Ghouls? Demons? Yeah. They're about. Oh boy. Watch yourselves, Creep Street. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because there's going to be a lot wrecked in today's episode. But of course, to get us started, as always, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Creep Street Podcast, Twitter at Creep Street Pod, otherwise known as X. Yeah. Follow us on threads. Follow us on TikTok. We also have a Facebook forum where anyone is welcome to join. Daily, we like to interact with our listeners there. Just It's called Citizens of the Milky Way, a Creep Street fan page. Just uh, click the Let Me In button and one of us will let you in. Of course. And of course, if once a week is not enough for you, you just head on over to patreon.com slash Creep Street Podcast for all sorts of goodies. And with, there's more, Maureen. Tell us about this book club. Yes, for those of you who do not know, here I'm I'm about to tell it to you. And for those who do know, here's a reminder. I am starting a Creep Street book club. Ooh! And this will be on YouTube, okay? A little uh-huh. different. It's not a podcast. It's more of a, you know, a visual forum. But I, you could probably just listen to it, too. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Anyway, um, yes, I'm very excited about this book club. Every single month, we're going to have a different book. And of course, it's going to cover a wide range of topics and a wide range of styles, just like Creep Street itself, okay? So we're talking books about cryptids, true crime books, books about hauntings, books about cults, nonfiction, fiction, lighthearted, serious, all of it. And Uh, all, just freaking all of it. Yeah! And this month, our first book for the Creep Street Book Club. And it's always going to be at the end of the month on YouTube. Probably the last day of the month, I'm going to be honest. So probably Halloween is when this video is going to come out. Okay. And the first book in our book club is called I'm in Love with Mothman by Paige Lavoie. I can't wait to get my hands all over this book. I know, I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Also, keep an eye on our socials because I am also going to be putting out a Google form that people can fill out with different questions that they wanna talk about during the video or comments that they might have, things like that. So keep an eye out, that will be coming shortly. Yes. So once again, that is I'm in Love with Mothman by Paige Lavoie, and we're going to have a great time. Absolutely. Now, Maureen, of course, as it is the Halloween season, yeah, we like to kick it off with a freaky, freaky freak show. We want to go for it in a way that you got to do. And this is one that people know. Oh, yeah. Maureen, what are we kicking off the Halloween season with this year? This year, we are kicking off October, the Halloween season, the, the the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. With a spooky one, folks. Okay. Get ready for Ouija 2. 
Zozo. This one sounds nasty. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go into it. And we, of course, a while back did a Ouija 1, you know, episode. Yes. It was 95, 96, 97. Mm, somewhere it, in there. It was in the Halloween season of 2021. So it's okay. been a couple years. Okay, okay. If you want to go back and listen to that, please do. I don't think it's necessary. No, 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 no. But you can if you want, of course. Yeah. This episode, we're going to be talking about Zozo, which is a demon that is, or maybe demon, I don't know, we're going to talk about it, that is very closely linked to the Ouija board actions. And we will also be talking a little bit more just about the Ouija board itself as well, because why not? Absolutely. You know, we're here. You know what I mean? I know. I know in part one, we covered kind of the history of it. And, yes. And how, so I'm interested to learn a little bit more about the, you know, the nuts and bolts. About the damn thing. Get a little deeper. Get a little, uh, get a little nasty with it. Now, of course, let me list off my sources for you for this episode. Now, one was a great book, actually, by Darren Evans called The Zozo Phenomenon. Okay. Then we have a bunch, and when I say a bunch, you know I mean a bunch. Oh, yeah. A bunch of articles here that were very helpful, and I would recommend you check out if you would like more information. One is called Why You Should Avoid Contacting the Sinister Demon Zozo. Okay. This is at liveabout.com by Stephen Wagner. Then we have Stranger Dimensions, Zozo, a terrifying Ouija board phenomenon by Rob Schwartz. We've got Ouija board dangers and the Zozo demon phenomenon over at Otherworldly Oracle. Then we have the Zozo demon, bizarre connections to Ouija, Led Zeppelin, and the Slenderman. And that is at Thrillist by Lindsay Romaine. And then we have Darren Evans' paranormal blog spot, of course. We got to get that. And, of course, you got to give it up for all sorts of Reddit pages. Oh, of and, course. And threads and all of it. Of course. So, of course, I didn't really get much information per se for this episode from these videos because most of it I had already kind of learned from the book and the articles. But there are also so many great videos out there about, uh, right. about Z- Zozo and, and Ouija as well on YouTube. So I recommend you check that out as well if you're interested. Oh, yeah. For those of you who have never heard of Zozo, and I know we kind of already talked about this a little bit at the beginning, he is thought to be, or it is thought to be, I guess I should say, a sinister, dark, evil demon that is highly associated with the Ouija board. Oh, yeah. It's really the main way that people contact Zozo. Some people think that after they've initially contacted Zozo through the Ouija board, they can kind of, you know, contact him in other ways afterwards. Interesting. But mainly, he's a Ouija guy. Yeah, that's his, you know, that's that's home field. Exactly. And it is very interesting because this is worldwide that so many people have said that Zozo, or just repeatedly Zio, 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 comes up when they are ouija it up. Yes, yes, and yes. So it is very interesting that it is that it is so widespread and it is so popular. It definitely, it, it makes you think, it makes you want to dive a little bit deeper, of course. Indeed it do. Now, when we start, I just think it's important to read this quote that I found on Reddit. And I, I hate that I didn't write down the user. That was my mistake. I just wrote down Reddit because I'm a silly goose. But I still think it's important to talk about. And it is, as, it is the following. Let's hear it. Christ has delivered me from demons, no cap. Okay. 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 No, no cap. cap. No cap. No cap. No cap. No cap. Just think about that. If you're scared, Christ maybe will deliver you from demons, no cap. You are forgiven, no cap. Oh, Let that give you a little strength going forward. And if Christ doesn't do it for you, fill in whatever it may be. Anything that you love will deliver you from demons no cap. Yes. Of course, we talked about this in more detail 
in our original VG episode, but just a little, you know, primer here to catch everyone up. The Ouija board, even though a lot of people and a lot of, you know, it seems like there may have been other quote unquote talking boards in in earlier societies potentially, Um, but really the Ouija board as we know and love it and use it and everything wasn't around until the 1800s. Yes. And it was very much, it was, it was kind of an interesting combo between a game that was marketed towards yes. really everyone it, that was like fun and, and it was easily accessible and everything. Right. Well, like we talked about in part one, yeah. the name Ouija is a brand yes. name. It's yes. The the actual spirit board is... is yeah, it's just e- called a spirit board or spirit talking board. Spirit board or yeah. something. It's kind of like, it's like, and I think we might have even said this in part one, uh, or yeah, that, that it's like Kleenex. Exactly. Kleenex has kind of become synonymous with nasal tissue. Oh, yeah. You just say, Gra- I-, I need to grab a Kleenex. Of course. And it is so interesting that it that it's done that because you would think if you if you just at surface level, if you're not thinking about it too hard, it would be so easy to believe like, wait, these people, you know, in the 1800s and the early 1900s, like I don't see them being more into, you know, spiritualism and all of that stuff. Like, it seems like that's more of a new age kind of thing. (laughs) That's not the case. No, spiritualism was hot. It was popping. It yes. was it was often it was popping and you know unfortunately sadly a lot of that had to do with the civil war. Yes. And a lot of people were trying to find ways to communicate with loved ones who had passed on. Uh, right, yes. So there was the whole séance thing when you were sitting around a table and there was like a medium that would kind of, you know, try to do stuff. The Fox sisters were kind of the main gals that really pioneered that. Yes, we have not covered the Fox sisters. We've mentioned them. Yes, we'll do a full-ass app yes. in the future. They've been mentioned in a few episodes, but yes, that was a... I think maybe it was even during the Stratford Poltergeist, they were, mm, they yeah. were mentioned briefly. Yes. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I want to say it was, it was maybe that episode. Yeah, it was one of our Poltergeist episodes for sure. And then yeah. also, of course, it was mentioned in Ouija, the first one. Yeah, right. But then going forward, people really liked this idea of the Ouija board because you didn't need to have like a medium or, a, you know, a psychic or anything like that with you. You just needed the board and your friends. Right, of course. And so it really kicked off, you know, around the Civil War era and then around World War One era as well, yes. you know, for very sad reasons. But it is interesting, of course. So the Ouija board went through a bunch of different, you know, brands and ownerships and and, and whatnot. But now it is owned by the toy company Hasbro. Yes, yes. This is this is a great recapper. Yeah. So because along with many other things, but the fact that it's, you know, that the Ouija board is technically a toy, you know, made by a toy company. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, think that that like I said, as well as many other things, proves that the Ouija board is is not real. It's just for fun. It doesn't really do anything. It's all like these like little like fine motor, like quick little like triggers or, or twitches or spasms or whatever in your fingers that make you do this and to make the whole group not think that they're doing it. And it's it's subconscious and all this stuff. Well, it's one of those things, because if you've noticed, I know there have been like, you know, everyday commercials for mm-hmm. Ouija. Yeah. But I know they're rare. It's not like you, when you see a commercial for Twister or like. Right. I've never seen a commercial for Ouija, have you? I want to say there has been some. Maybe I said, but like certainly they, you never saw them like advertised, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, it was always just kind of, I would just like see it at Target and I would like be a little nervous. Same. And, but every at the same time, maybe they didn't need to because everyone already, its reputation proceeded. Exactly. It's kind of like a, it doesn't need It doesn't need the advertising. It's like Beyonce. Sure. But a lot of people, of course, really, really believe in the power of the Ouija board. Oh, yeah. To the point where they are absolutely horrified, won't even talk about it, won't even talk about their experiences, if they have tried it before, want to avoid it at all costs. Oh, yeah. And then there are some people who kind of think that it is a useful tool to kind of get to communicate with the other side you know especially if there's someone who is you know more educated and trained in this kind of work in the ways of the weege 
and the ways of the Ouija, of course. It really runs the gamut about who likes it, who doesn't like it, feelings about it, who thinks it's real, who doesn't think it's real. It is interesting. Like we've said before, I grew up playing with a Ouija board. Not all the time, but a handful of times. Right. Which is so funny because growing up, I was always so scared of everything, especially stuff like that. But yeah, I think it was just peer pressure probably, and I just went along with it. But Amen, amen. Come on. Middle school, junior high, you got to love it. So my experience with the Ouija board, I remember it feeling real to me. It was very scary when we would do it, but I don't know. It's funny. I didn't really think much of it at the time. I didn't really know much about the Ouija board. I hadn't heard much about it outside of my friends. So I didn't think that we were really doing anything quote unquote bad or like dangerous or anything. Right. And I wonder if maybe that's why, you know, I don't know. I I, I just... To me personally, nothing happened, but I do know my friend whose house we did it in, she said that she, you know, saw even like full body apparitions and a lot of weird stuff happening in her house. Wow. I don't know. Dylan, did you ever grow up using a Ouija board? I never used one. Now, forgive me if I told this story in part one, but I have a bit of a quick, I have a Ouija story. Please. It's high school. I remember it was summertime. We were out of school. It was the summertime for me between freshman and sophomore year. A big year. And a friend of mine, she was a couple, she was, I think she was going to be a senior or maybe she had just graduated. She had had like a Ouija board at her house. I never saw it or anything. And But she calls me one day and she goes, I've got this Ouija board and it's, it's freaking me out. Okay. And I want to get rid of it. Mm. it. But of course she doesn't want to go alone. So I'm like, okay. She also so, wanted to... I, I don't know. I mean, other people came with us, too. Oh, okay. Wasn't, well, Because we, right. we picked up other people. Oh, I, don't, right. I don't know. If, I don't think it was... I rescind. So she picks me up. I remember it was in her parents' minivan. I And we both, like, turned around because it was in the back seat. We're Ooh. both like, you know, it feels like you have eyes on you. Oh, yeah. You know, because we're young and we're scared. We picked up a couple more friends. And there was this trail outside of town. This, like, you know, for hiking and stuff. I could be wrong. I want to say they called it Grievers, like Grievers Woods or something mm. like that. That's interesting, like grieve, like... You know. Yeah. Well, we pull off the road to go into this, you know, there's this little area where you could park before you go in the woods, and we see a cop car there with another car, and it looks like this cop has pulled, like, someone over or something. So we end up, we back out because we're like, oh, well, you know, we don't want to... Oh, yeah. You know, it looks like someone might, you know, there it looked like they had act, they had pulled someone over, so if we were like, okay, we'll just leave them be and... Five oh. We pull out and we think, well, maybe we'll come back. We'll drive around for a little while and then come back and see if, you know. Yeah. That's when police lights come on behind us. Oh, no. So we pull the car over. And keep in mind, we were young. No one had been drinking or anything. We, right, it was, right. we weren't speeding or anything. It was officer comes up to the window. We roll it down. And, and he explained, you know, there. I guess there was some sort of now weed is legal in Michigan, but it oh, wasn't yeah. then. And. I guess there was some sort of weed deal going oh, down and God. he was there trying to catch the, the yeah. And so when he saw us pull in and then leave, oh. you know. Oh yeah. So he goes, "So can I ask what are you kids doing out tonight?" And my friend just went with the truth and said, "Well, officer, we're trying to get rid of a Ouija board." And he picked his flashlight up, shined it in, looked at all of us, and then he just said, well, you kids have a good night and be safe. He walked back to his car. <laughs> yep. But that was the funniest story. That is I so always funny. talk about. I, I always tell, yeah, that like the officer was just like, okay, I'm not, just get out of here. What if he was like, let me help you? And then he just like fucking shot it like 50 times. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it was, it, but it was a fun, funny, that is funny, funny night. Do you remember how you ended up disposing of the Ouija board? I believe they just let gave it to a friend, like at a friend's house. Oh, okay. Was is what they ended up doing. Because that is another thing, and I don't. I, I'm sure we mentioned this a little bit on the first part, but maybe we didn't. And I don't actually even know the answer. So if you do, reach out to us and let us know. But there are very specific ways that you're supposed to get rid of a Ouija board. You're not supposed to just throw it away. It's like, you're supposed to like bury it or give it to someone or like it's, everyone has a different right. theory on what it is, but. And I think that was the intent was they were going to bury it in the woods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. Or at least just toss it in the woods. Right. Right. That is interesting. So the Ouija board has captured the attention of so many people around the world. Yes. And I think just a fun little, tidbit 
here to start us off still is that in the 1930s, there was a guy named Bill Wilson and he was, he was having issues with alcohol. Oh he boy. was an alcoholic and he, he felt like, you know what? He just kind of resigned himself to the, his fate that he was going to die from this. And, you know, but then apparently he had a spiritual breakthrough. Him and his wife, Lois, used a Ouija board and the Ouija board told him to reach out to other alcoholics and create something called Alcoholics Anonymous. Really? Uh, uh, according to multiple websites. No way! I had no idea. Which is so interesting because a lot of, you know, some people don't like that because Alcoholics Anonymous is like kind of going along. Not that you need to be Christian, but it's like a Christian thing. Well, that's what I had always heard. And not that you, I yeah. guess, can't be you, you yeah, know, you don't like, have to be it, Christian to do it, but yeah, it has or, a, and yeah. not that you don't have to not be Christian to play with a Ouija board. Right, I feel like there's you know there's nuance to it. It's kind of like how he said you, there's yeah. technically Christian witches. There's different. Yes, I'm just saying that people were getting exactly. some people were getting fussy about it, but God bless him. He was like, I don't give a fuck. This is what happened. Yeah. I, so yeah, so it, it's just an, it's, it's it's interesting, but. The Ouija board is not just something that is fun. It is not just something that you do at a sleepover. It's not something you just do to get some sort of positive reaction or even just fun. Sometimes really scary shit can happen with the Ouija board. Now, in 1993, Harry and Nicola Fuller were both murdered not long after they got married. There was a man named Stephen Young who was accused and then tried for the murder. And he was convicted as well. But not long after that, it came out that the jury used a Ouija board to decide whether or not the man was guilty. Ooh, okay. Yeah, apparently this happened in Australia. People getting cuckoo, we're having fun, but maybe, uh, maybe at what cost? Maybe worthy of an appeal. Yeah, and they did. They did. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it, it was he was still convicted and, you know, sentenced to life in prison. Well, or maybe not, unfortunately, if he really did it. But um, right. I guess if he, you know, if he was guilty. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the Ouija board was right. I don't know. I will admit that it's a 50 50. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But that's interesting. But this story here is a little darker. Uh oh. Oh, get your flashlights. Yeah. So there was a man named Brian Roach. And he lived in Oklahoma. Apparently, he was even the former mayor of the town he was in called uh, Minco, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this was in 2001 when he was murdered by his mother-in-law. Whoa. Now, his mother-in-law, his wife, and his two daughters were playing with a Ouija board when his mother-in-law interpreted, I, I don't know, that... that through the Ouija board some way. I don't know if it was literally through the letters that the Ouija board was using with the planchette or if it was just like these thoughts that she was having that she thought was, you know, being sent to her psychically through the Ouija board. I don't know. But she thought that her son-in-law was incredibly evil and she attacked him and killed him. And apparently she also believed that her youngest granddaughter, at least of this, you know, family, this immediate family, was also possessed and evil and was, you know, wanting to attack her as well. Mother-in-laws. Oh, boy. Yeah, it is hard that it was the mother-in-law just for, you know, optics reasons. Um, hard to kind of, it's easy to just, you know, be like, oh, mother-in-laws. But yeah, no, that's really bad. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there are a lot of stories like this where people believe that the Ouija board is telling them that they need to do something. And it's interesting because sometimes people beforehand maybe did have some issues with, you know, real differentiating reality and, and you know, their thoughts for sure um and, and all sorts of issues but there are some people that before this happened they you know seemingly had no mental health uh, problems so it's a little scary but as we were saying the ouija board can be used for many different purposes it's not just a light fun silly thing you do at sleepovers it's not this evil terrible thing that's going to convince you to commit heinous crimes some people also believe that it is a tool to open a portal between our world and the other world. Oh boy. And it can be a tool that you can use if you know what you're doing and you were prepared and, and all of that stuff. 
But not only that, the issue is a lot of people can unintentionally open this portal. You know, they're yeah. playing with the Ouija board. It could be running the gamut, but you know, around what they're expecting or what they want between it's just a fun little experiment all the way to, you know, maybe they're really trying to contact a, a past loved one or a loved yes. one who has passed. Yes, of course. So that's kind of where a big issue lies is that sometimes these portals can be opened by mistake without even realizing it. And sometimes some negative shit can come through. And that is where we come to Zozo. Oh boy, yikes! Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, just like with the Ouija board itself, there's a lot of differing opinions about Zozo. Of course. Some people think that Zozo is just a silly little thing that kind of comes up with our subconscious. Some people think it's a real demon all over the place. But something that is a common thread between so many, probably even all of these encounters or experiences with Zozo is darkness. It's literally dark around them. It becomes darker, more shadowy, and... It's like an absence of light. Exactly. And and as well as just darkness within, kind of darkness, dark feeling, low vibration kind of feeling. Yeah. Now, some people think that Zozo is a nickname of sorts for Pazuzu, who is, according to the World History Encyclopedia, is an Assyrian slash Babylonian demonic god who was first popular in the first millennium BCE. He is known now as, you know, a god or a demon of wind that was, you know, head of the demons of this, this time and this era and this place and is especially popular or popularized by the exorcist. Yes. Pazuzu in the movie The Exorcist was the demon that possessed Reagan. Yes. So some people think that it is a nickname for Pazuzu. Some people think that it is the devil. Some people think it's some other demon. Some people think, as we've said before, it's just an internet urban legend. Yeah. But even though Zozo has really kind of gained popularity in the last, well, especially since, you know, the 80s, but especially in the last, let's say, 10 years, he actually was popping up a lot earlier than that. The first reported occurrence or a written text of Zozo was in 1816 in a French book called Dictionary Infernal by Jacques Colleen de Plancy. I've said it once, I said, I've said it again. I don't speak French, I'm so sorry, but you know what I mean. And in this book, it was said that there was a young girl in France who became possessed under this, this demon, this, this Zozo demon. And a lot of people take this as proof, saying like, oh, look, Zozo was mentioned in this book way, way before The Exorcist came out. Right. It's its own thing. But according to the paranormal scholar, which we love. Oh, yes. A wonderful YouTube channel. Yes. The accurate translation of the book shows that De Plancy was saying that this girl was rattling on nonsense and had previously actually been publicly beaten because she was faking possession. Maybe other ways you could have handled that. Yeah, that's tough. I don't agree with that for sure. Basically, the author says that he doesn't believe that this girl was actually possessed, but he does believe in demonic possession. So it's kind of like, okay, like, so this is, that's basically just a wash. Oh, right. He's saying he believes in it, but not her story. Yeah. And in that Zozo means nothing. It was just somehow it came up. Ah. And, you know, so it's interesting because a lot of people still use this excerpt from this book to prove that, that Zozo is real, but many other people use it to disprove Zozo's reality. Right. So it, it's just weird. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, people are still convinced that Zozo is real, is horrifying, has affected them, all of the above. And those who have claimed that they have made contact with Zozo, they mention that also other names come up that, you know, kind of mean Zozo, like Zaza, Oz, Zo, Za. But then there's two that I'm like, you know what? Come on. One is Mama, M-A-M-A. 
Mm. And one is abacus. It's like... Well, no, I like, do hate math. Yeah, yeah, right. And it's like, I would prefer a calculator, for Christ's sake. Give me a Texas instrument over yeah. an abacus. Yeah. And also, like, mama, it's like, what do you... It's like, why would that just always be Zozo? Like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. And we'll come into this later where a lot of people say that Zozo will pretend to be someone else that has been important to you in your life. Uh, yes. So yeah. they will say that they're someone, and so in that way, I understand mama, like they're pretending to be someone's mom. That's a very good point. But just when they're, like, revealing their own name or saying their own name, saying M-A-M-A, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. But that's just me. And even though Zozo may be Pazuzu, possibly, and be a big deal, that doesn't mean that he's just going to heads of state. Or, you know, the hot shots. Yeah. It's all over all sorts of people. Not to put this person down. I'm sure this person is great. Of course. I'm not trying to say that. But now I would love to share an account of someone's story with Zozo. Now, this is from a Reddit user called Shap94. About two years ago, my best friend, let's call her Sarah, and I were experimenting with a Ouija board. We had done it without issue about five separate occasions prior. Sarah had practiced witchcraft for years, but I was still new to all of it, but very open to learning. At the time of our encounter with this demon, I still to this day will not speak or type his name, the two of us were college roommates. We had a friend, let's call her Anne, over and invited her to the quad with us to use the Ouija board. Anne was highly skeptical. But during the Ouija board session, she made comments and jokes that could have been perceived as disrespectful to the spirits we were communicating with. We told Anne to stop, but she didn't think it was serious and kept on. So we decided to stop and go back to our dorm. Anne went ahead up to our room while Sarah and I decided to stay in the courtyard and try to communicate through the board once more. We asked routine questions like, is there any spirits that would like to communicate? The planchette moved to yes. How old are you? Planchette moved back and forth from 1001, back and forth. This hadn't happened before, so we decided to ask another question. Their name. It did the same with the letters, but the planchette slid from N, Z, Z, N, back and forth. I started to feel uneasy. I remember reading about the Ouija board demon, and in that moment, all I can remember was that we weren't supposed to let it spell its name. I'm thinking of this to myself, and it goes from Z, O, and as it starts to head back to Z, I abruptly force the planchette to stop and tell Sarah who was leading the session. I was just lending my energy and putting my fingers on the planchette, offering questions to her that she would officially ask, etc. Sarah, we need to say goodbye. We did. Sarah ended the session. However, Sarah told me that as soon as I said we needed to say goodbye, she felt the darkest energy she had ever felt wash over her entire body. And for a split second, all she could see was black. As we were packing it away, Sarah went to check her phone. It was dead. She told me it had been fully charged when we left to go to the quad with Anne just an hour earlier. Then we went back to the dorm, and Anne told us that the TV messed up while we were out there and all the colors only showed red. I don't know if these details are related or, or just a line of coincidences. But Sarah and I talked about what we experienced and agreed it must have been the Ouija board demon. She's doing a lot better now, but for a while, I think that dark energy stayed with her. She got depressed, almost failed out of college the two semesters following the event. Neither of us have ever used a spirit board again. Some of the friends we tell don't believe us. I know Anne didn't. But I swear, this all was very real and very scary. Well, it seemed like it was draining power, mm -hmm. of course, from the the uh, the battery and whatnot. It's it, very interesting. It was not happy that they stopped the sesh. Apparently, yes. it, it seems like now the TV. I'm not sure. I mean, I you would. Know, I, yeah, yeah. There could be some, I mean, especially because Anne was, you know, a part of the the circle as well at first. Yes. So it, it, it does make sense that maybe there would be some sort of activity going on there. Right. But it is, that, that is just very scary. And I'm glad they kind of, 
they kind of caught it early yes. in this one. It still was bad. It seems like maybe Sarah really went through the damn ringer afterwards, but but thankfully everyone is safe and okay now. It's a, just an interesting story. Yeah. Now, that was a story involving Zozo, of course. But there is kind of a Mac Daddy of, of Zozo stories and Zozo experiences, and it comes from a gentleman named Darren Evans. Now, Darren Evans claims to have had many scary, intense, really awful experiences and residual effects from Zozo. And I would love to read some of that right now from his original post talking about this back in 2009 on a forum called TrueGhostTales.com. So Dylan, if you wouldn't mind reading Darren Evans' words. My name is Darren and I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm currently 40 years old and have held a fascination with the occult since an early age. I've had many bizarre experiences with Ouija boards and I'm writing this as a warning to people that bad things can happen because of these portals. Parker Brothers doesn't care if a demon possesses you or if you come under some type of attack from something you know nothing about. The majority of people from the United States holds a skeptical view regarding the scientific evidence of spirits or ghosts. And many people who believe in these things also believe that it is for this very reason that ghosts and poltergeists occur here and exist under the radar, so to speak. These Ouija boards are manufactured under the precept that they are mere toys. Let me tell you firsthand, they are not toys and they should be used with strict caution and probably should not be messed with at all. Other countries take a more open-minded view of spirits, demons, and ghosts, and many, many cultures have based entire religions on these beliefs. During my experiences with Ouija boards, one particular spirit always seemed compelled to make its presence known. Its name is Zozo. Today, I refuse to even pronounce its name, as I believe the mere pronunciation of it can cause it to manifest itself. Too many times to count, it has at first pretended to be a nice spirit, or pretended to be whomever I was trying to contact. But eventually, it showed its true self, cussing me, threatening me, and others present in the room. Once it actually cussed me using what looked like Latin or Hebrew, and using biblical terminology. I was genuinely fascinated and startled by how many times Zozo showed up, even in many different states and many different Ouija boards. It always wound up being very nasty and commented freely about how it wanted to possess my girlfriends and take them to paradise. When asked where paradise was, it spelled out H-E-L-L. One time after Zozo was being extremely evil, I walked into my bathroom only to see my one-year-old daughter about to drown. Her mother had left her alone in the tub just for a second, and somehow the water got turned on and was overflowing. Instinctively, she had her face tilted up and was seconds from going under when I grabbed her from the water. The next day, she was hospitalized for some weird internal infection and was put in isolation for 14 days straight as doctors tried to diagnose the illness. We almost lost her, and that was when I began to suspect demonic attack. At the same time, my girlfriend maintained a trance-like state. Her personality changed from a very sweet person to withdrawn and uncaring. Zozo said before this that it was going to possess her and eat her soul. I was recording music for a future rock project, and I remember jokingly asking if it had an opinion on what I should name the band. It spelled Iron Tongue which at the time I thought was pretty cool. Only later, when my daughter's tongue swelled up in the hospital to the point of asphyxiation, I realized that this wasn't cool at all. Her tongue became rock hard and distorted her face, swelling up to where it hung grotesquely from her mouth. We took turns bedside at the hospital for what seemed like forever before my daughter began to recover from this strange affliction. My guests would spend the night in our house, and they would claim they heard frightening voices coming from inside the walls. Objects would be thrown across the room and spiders would seem to come from nowhere. 
My girlfriend's brother, who lived with us, complained that he couldn't sleep at night because the conversations were so loud that he simply could not rest. He believed in ghosts, and though he wasn't afraid of them, he said that it definitely felt demonic. Lights would come off and on by themselves. Doors would open and unlock themselves. One night in our bedroom, a vicious laughter emanated from thin air. And to this day, I cannot explain the terror in that laughter. One night I was awakened by what felt like hands on my throat, choking me. I could not breathe. I could not scream. After about 30 seconds, it released its grip, and I gasped for air. The same thing happened to my girlfriend the next night. Another night, me and her both were standing just outside the back porch sliding glass door when we were talking about a supposed curse on their family. I abruptly exclaimed, I rebuke this curse in the name of Jesus Christ. I no longer finished saying those exact words when a deafening sound and a vibration struck the entire house with such an alarming boom that the neighbors came over to ask if I had heard something strange. I knew it wasn't our imaginations. I got out the ladder to see what had landed on top of the house, only to find nothing. Things settled down after that, and to this day I believe that whatever made that noise also caused the disturbance to go away. For a while. My girlfriend broke up with me, and I met someone online in Michigan where I moved up to be with her. She didn't believe in spirits, and although I knew better, I decided to make her a believer as well. Living in a very small town in Marshall, Michigan, there were no stores that sold Ouija boards, so I downloaded it from the internet, and I printed it out, and to my horror, Zozo returned. It said it came from cyberspace, and when I asked it where it lived, it spelled skull necklace. We didn't think much of this until I asked again where it was, this time spelling mirror. There was only one mirror in the bedroom where we crouched on the floor and I heard a scream coming from her seven-year-old niece who was watching us with another young friend. We looked up at the mirror and saw the skull necklace swaying back and forth with glowing eyes looking down at us. My girlfriend's son had hung the necklace on one of the posts of the waterbed hours before I downloaded the paper board. We almost jumped out of our skin, and although three feet of fresh snow had fallen that night, we found ourselves in the front yard not knowing what to do, scared and frozen in terror. My girlfriend was so fascinated she drove 40 miles to purchase a new glow-in-the-dark Ouija board, much to my dismay. The next night, we had another session in the same room. Zozo immediately came forth, and even without me being a participant. My girlfriend's nieces were using the planchette, and I would secretly write down a color onto a small piece of paper, then crumple it up where no one could see. I asked the young girls to ask the board if it knew which color I had written down. It quickly scooted to, yes, blue. I remember chills coursing up and down my spine as I threw the wadded up paper to my girlfriend. Her eyes widened as she read the written color, blue. We tried the same thing with shapes and words and every time the board knew. One night we asked the board if the spirit would show itself. It spelled yes and told me to turn out the lights and take a picture of the necklace above the board. I did just that and what turned out is eerie to say the least. On the upper left-hand corner of the picture, you can plainly see winged skeletons flying about, and they are the exact same weird shape of this skateboarder's skeleton necklace. Towards the middle, you can make out hideous faces. I have seen at least four evil faces in this picture. I took this picture about six years ago, and people have stolen it off of paranormal websites claiming they took it, when I know truthfully it was me. I have sent this picture to several experts, and they have all said they cannot explain the images inside. As if all of this wasn't strange enough, now comes the really scary part. A few months ago, I googled the word Zozo. To my shock, many other people have been contacted by a demon by the same name. I read about 20 similar stories, and I am now convinced that this simply cannot be mere coincidence. Supposedly, Zozo is an ancient demon name which possibly stands for the Destroyer. Claims of demonic possession are associated with this Zozo, and I feel it my duty to warn people to steer clear of this if it happens to present itself during a Ouija board session. 
I am currently researching this phenomenon for a future book, and am in the initial stages of presenting my findings to a reputable demonologist who has been involved in hundreds of cases of paranormal activities across the world, including a haunting in Connecticut. So what is this Zozo? Supposedly, the three-headed dog demon which guards the gates of hell is a tattoo on its forehead that spells Zozo. Also, Zozo is a term Aleister Crowley claimed meant 666. Jimmy Page of the rock band Led Zeppelin also used Zozo as a symbol on the Zeppelin 4 album. Could Zozo and Zozo be connected somehow? How can so many people from so many different parts of the world somehow lie about this Zozo spirit? And if they aren't lying, then how can you explain these visitations by this wicked entity? Is Zozo the devil himself? or a wayward demon who has the power to manifest itself wherever and whenever it is called. Heed my warnings, people. If you are playing around with a Ouija board and you jokingly ask if it has a name and it spells Zozo, close the session properly, cleanse the house, never, I repeat, never ask it again. And if you are brave enough to carry on conversations with this spirit, do not antagonize it or act on its directions. I know what I have seen, and I know other people have also come into contact with this spirit. It is dangerous beyond words. I realize not every session results in negativity, but when you play with this Zozo, you are playing with fire. Everything I have described here is true, and I am not exaggerating one bit. It may take me years, but I do intend on writing a book about this, as I have many more stories I do not have time to mention here. They all stem from true events that took place while talking to this Zozo. Folks, I have been told by people wiser than myself that the spirit world is more real than this world of so-called reality. Ouija boards can cause many bad things to happen in your life. Maintain an open mind, and most of all, be careful. Dylan, thank you so much for reading that. That was beautiful. Of course. A wonderful job. Now, we have a few things to mention, one of which I didn't even, I I missed until just this reading. Dylan, tell the people. I was born and raised in the town of Marshall, Michigan. This This, is where you're from. This is a tiny town. This is where I was born and raised. And this is, uh, it's interesting that this person is from there. I, I would love to find out who this is. Yeah, especially because... That's the town where you got rid of the Ouija board. Yes, how funny is that? Yes. The story I just told earlier. Yes, that's so funny. So yes, we had to comment on that. That's very interesting. A fun synchronicity kind of weird coincidence there or something. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, second of all, in there, you know, we say that uh, Darren, he reported that he, you know, rushed to the bathroom where his girlfriend was giving their daughter a bath and apparently... You know, his girlfriend stepped out of the room or she was gone or whatever. And, you know, the daughter was close to drowning, all of that. That shit pisses me the f*** off more than fucking anything in the world. Yeah. Never, ever leave a baby in the bath without you watching it. Yes. Ever. Keep your fucking eyes on the baby in the bath the whole fucking time. Yes. And also, getting an infection after a near-drowning experience is incredibly common. So it's just frustrating that he was, like, saying that, you know, he's like, and she got this unknown weird infection that it must have been demonic. No, it's because there's water in her lungs, bitch. You know, it's like, it's a quick Google search. Also, just kind of common knowledge that, that that happens. Yeah. So it's so frustrating it's like, that I don't think was a fucking demon. I think your girlfriend is a fucking idiot. That shit pisses me off. I'm so sorry. Anyway, if you have a baby, never leave it in the bathtub for alone, even for one second. Thank you. Yes. Now, that's a very spooky, scary story, though, regardless. Of course. Very interesting. But what's even more interesting here, in my opinion, or maybe, I don't know, adds a little something is that he has changed his story a little bit over the years or added to his story a little bit over the years. This Darren guy. This Darren. So he was on an episode of Ghost Adventures with Zach Bagans. During this episode and in interviews as well, he has added that his daughter was temporarily blinded by Zozo. 
Whoa. Very intense, very scary. Now in his book, which, you know, he mentioned in this article that he wanted to write a book about his experiences and he did pop off King. I think that's great. But in this book, he added this too. He said that his first encounter with Zozo was not in the 2000s as he mentioned. It was actually in 1982 when he first came into contact with Zozo, when he discovered a board in his girlfriend's basement and engraved on the back, it said, Zozo. Whoa. Yes. Now in an interview with a New Jersey newspaper, Darren then said that the Zozo engraved Ouija board that he found didn't have Zozo engraved on the back, but it was actually written on the front where Ouija was supposed to be written. Okay. And here is another interesting tidbit that some people think kind of shows that Evans here was lying. Uh, Some people just think it's an interesting coincidence or, or maybe has something to do with Zozo. I don't know. But the font of Zozo on the front of his book is very similar to the writing of Zozo, which uh, there's a lot of, I've heard a lot of information about it. And also he mentioned this in his book and in interviews as well. Some people are saying that it's an ancient symbol that represents Saturn and that Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin has been all about this Zozo symbol, which is Z-O-S-O rather than Z-O-Z-O. Yes, yes. Yes, and Jimmy Page is actually known for being a serious student or or contributor or, or lover or, you know, student of the occult. Yes. Especially Aleister Crowley. And uh, he even bought the house on uh, Loch Ness that Aleister Crowley lived in and did a lot of, uh, yes. lot of uh, work there, a lot of spells. Where he, condu- well, attempted to conduct that famous ritual where you would summon a demon yes. and he quit halfway through, which they say don't do. Yeah. And some think that Nessie yeah. might have actually been conjured by Aleister Crowley. I mean, the guy. Yeah. You never know. And also just going back a touch just for a second, Evans in his uh, article there, his his, uh, his statement there, he also mentioned that Aleister Crowley, you know, Zozo was like a, 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 a phrase or a saying to go along with 666. I don't know if that's true. I have not seen that anywhere, but I, I'm not a, you know, a scholar of Aleister Crowley. I could be wrong, but right. just wanted to call that out. So the reason why I'm bringing up this Jimmy Page situation, who is very much into all of this stuff, is that Evans is also a huge, huge Led Zeppelin fan. And this has been acknowledged and all of that. And so a lot of people think that the only reason that Evans is, you know, talking about Zozo and everything is because he's, you know, a big Led Zeppelin fan and wants to have this connection and and all that stuff. But Evans, he, he does not, he says, no, no, no. And, you know, he says that the root word Zo, it has magical power. Right, right. I don't really know where he he has heard that or or who has told that to him or where he read that or, or I don't know. So Evans posted that in 2009. What's interesting is that there was pretty much no online presence of Zozo before 2009. Right, right. So that kind of lends to the idea that maybe this was all kind of made up. But a lot of people after, you know, he posted in 2009 came forward and said that they, you know, had this Zozo situation happen to them way before. They just never, you know, publicly talked about it, especially because as we mentioned before, the popularization of the movie The Exorcist with Pazuzu. Of course. But Here's just an interesting kind of the thought that I want to throw in there. And that is in 1972, there was a couple of psychologists from Toronto and they tested a group of people. It was called the Philip experiment. And basically they told everyone that they were doing a seance for someone named Philip. They all ended up being completely convinced that they could feel Philip, that they heard knocking noises, that the table vibrated, all of this stuff, when really Philip was just a made up person by the scientists. 
Right, right. So that might show you, okay, so maybe more of this is not wishful thinking, but you're kind of willing this to, to believe this kind of thing that you go along with the group idea. But there's other ideas as well. I'm not saying that that is what is happening. I'm just saying that maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. Right, right. And of course, some people think he's just a straight up demon, as we have mentioned before. Now, some people think that he's not necessarily a demon, but a servitor of a witch or sorcerer. And I don't know much about servitors, but essentially what I have heard from my research, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's a spirit created by a witch or a magician or what have you. It's It's a way to manifest something. Oh, Um, so it's not, you aren't summoning something, you're creating something. It's almost like a tulpa, but it's like coming from within you. And oftentimes it's kind of like you create this thing, maybe from a pain or an anxiety or a problem with you, and then you're able to like vanquish it. So some people think that Zozo is like that because apparently sometimes servitors are not given like a deadline or a timeline for as long as they're supposed to exist or be around or whatever. So they can kind of just run off and, and, you know, be crazy causing shit to go on. Right, right. And some people going off of that think that Zozo is a tulpa. That this kind of group worry and fear of Zozo, especially with this, with the Ouija board, has created Zozo. And that there is a, this kind of entity, maybe not a demon per se, but some sort of, you know, trickster, maybe evil, maybe just uh, spooky. For sure. Uh, entity that has been created because of our collective fear. We've talked so much about that, of course, in the past with different, you know, beings or entities or things like that. So here's the thing, though. Even though we have heard all of these scary, spooky things about what's going on, I know a lot of you are still going to use a Ouija board. You're still going to go for it. So here are some ways that you can protect yourself from Zozo. One idea is to draw a circle around yourself and, you know, the whole group with maybe sea salt, dried sage, or or holy water. You also can ask, you know, your guardian angels, ancestors, anything like that to protect you while you were there. Um, Never leave the circle when you're all in the circle together. Make sure you do the out loud goodbye that is very clear that the panchette goes to goodbye. Some people say goes over to goodbye three times. Another one, of course, is to remain calm if you think this is happening. You know, just freaking out, getting super fearful and all of that. It it isn't going to help the situation. And another tip is to, if you feel like something is happening, if there's a spirit with you that, that has attached itself to you or your home or whatever, don't be afraid. Reach out to a rabbi, a priest a spiritualist, a psychic, what have you. I don't know exactly what will do it, but do something to get this out there. Ask for help. It's not, it's okay to ask for help. There are people there that want to help you with this. Absolutely. But let's talk about some warning signs just so we know. Okay, rapid movements on the Ouija board. We got to be careful, especially if they're doing the damn uh, figure eight, the the, uh, infinity symbol. Be very careful of that. If you feel uneasy, if you feel darkness around you, the the shadows around you, you know, get out of there. Of course, if you, the Z's, the Z-O-Z-O-Z-O, you know, try to get out of there. And if you are having maybe a pleasant conversation with a spirit and then all of a sudden it turns sour or another spirit comes in there and, and is, you know, cursing, not give, you know, cursing you, but like swearing, saying fuck and shit know that that's a sign yeah that's a sign so these are just some ideas to to keep you safe if you end up deciding to use a ouija board and you know what there are even more stories about the spookiness of zozo and we are going to share them on our patreon this month very excited to share those with you but but you know what i think you all know now who zozo is or, or what he could be and i think we all just need to say no no. We are here, even though Creep Street, you know, we deal with the spooky, we deal with the dark, we deal with the macabre, we're here with light. We create light around us. We're not about holding on to that shit, okay? That's right. Get it out of there. Cleanse. 
create a, a, a big light around you, maybe a rainbow around you. Get that shit out of there. Yeah. And uh, good luck. Thank you so much, Maureen. And I'll tell you. Yeah. I have a list of names I wouldn't mind popping up on a Ouija board. Okay. Folks, give it on up for our top tier Patreon subscribers. Of course, The Dream, James Watkins, The Finished Face, Via Lungfist, The Madman, Marcus Hall, The Vivacious, Vicky McHugh, The Tenacious, Teresa Hackworth, The Heartbreak Kid, Chris Hackworth, The Oh So Suave, Sean Richardson, The British Bone Breaker, Bex Martin, The Notorious, Nicholas Barker, The Terrifying, Taylor Lashmet, The Count of Cool, Cameron Corliss, The Archduke of Attitude, Adam Archer, The Sinister, Sam Kiker, The Nightmare of New Zealand, Noeline Vivilli, The Loathsome, Johnny Love, The Carnivorous, Kevin Bogey, The Killer Stud, Carl Staub, The Bi- Firestarter, Heather Carter, The Conqueror, Christopher Damien Damaris, The Awfully Awesome Annie, The Murderous Maggie Leach, The Sir of Sexy, Sam Hackworth, The Evil Elizabeth Riley, Lauren Hellfire, Hernandez Lopez, The Maniacal Laura Maynard, The Vicious Karen Van Buren, the arch nemesis Aaron Bird, the sadistic Sergio Castillo, the rap scallion Ryan Crum, the beast Benjamin Huang, the devilish Chris Set, the psycho Sam, the electric Emily Zhang, the renegade Corey Ramos, the crazed Carlos, the antagonist Andrew Park, the monstrous Michaela Schur, the witchy wonder J.P. Weimer, the freaky Ben Forsyth, the barbaric Andrew Barry, and the mysterious Marcella. Oh my goodness, that was fantastic. And thank you so very much to our top tier Patreon subscribers. We are so, so grateful for you. And of course, thank you so much to all of our Patreon subscribers. We're so happy to have you. And thank you to all of you, no matter if you're a Patreon subscriber or not. We are so grateful for you and we wish you just the happiest, funnest, best, crispiest, chilliest, coziest, October ever. It's Halloween on Creep Street, folks. Woo! Please remember to like or rate, subscribe, leave a good review. It really helps us out so much, and we've been getting some good reviews lately. We're so grateful for you for doing that. But gosh darn it, we're greedy. We want more. We want more, we want more, we want more. That's right, baby. Yeah, so thank you so much for doing that. We love you. Citizens of the Milky Way, my name is Dylan Hackworth. I'm Maureen Bogey. Good night and goodbye. Bye.